Sometimes it's not enough for a keyword to simply be uh, made red or made bold in a different font. Sometimes you want it to be actually completely enclosed in a capsule, sort of like this. You want it to be something that can actually flow with the text no matter where it may be. It's basically just a new character style. Uh, but in order to make that character style, we have to set up a new type of stroke. And here's where things get kind of interesting. So you go to the stroke panel and you pull down this conditional menu on the top right here. And this brings up the stroke styles uh, menu list. I'm gonna make a new stroke style here and I'm gonna call it capsule. In order to make this work the way I want it to work, uh, the length has to be exactly the same as the pattern length. So I'm increasing this to a full third of an inch here and I'm making the pattern length a full third of an inch. So those are exactly lined up. And I'm also going to change the cap to be a round cap. I'm leaving the corners as is, and this makes this, uh, as you can see in the preview, just this solid stroke here with little rounded corners or rounded caps at either end. Now that we have this new stroke style, let's go ahead and make a new character style that uh, uses that stroke in an interesting way. Sometimes for a, an especially difficult or unusual character style, uh, instead of going straight to the character style menu, I'll go ahead and start manipulating the uh, text directly and then make a character style based on that. In the character panel, not the character style panel, the character panel, I'm pulling down this conditional menu. I am adding the underline uh, option to it. There, you can see the underline uh, added there. I'm also going to open the underline options and I'm gonna increase this, the thickness of this underline quite a bit. Uh, first things first, I'm gonna make it a red color just cause I like, I like it to be red. Uh, I'm going to set this weight to be a bit thicker. I'm turning on preview now just to see what this looks like. Uh, it's a bit big. Uh, I'm gonna offset this a little bit so that it raises up a bit, increasing the Thickness again, raising that a bit. Okay, cool. And I'm choosing this new capsule stroke style that I have here. But this is very hard to read. So as a part of that, uh, part of this new uh, character attribute, I'm gonna make this text white. Going into the swatch panel, choosing the fill for this text and making that white. For now, this is enough for me to make a new character style based on this manipulated text. I'm making a new character style while having this manipulated text selected. And all of the other character attributes that have applied to this text are also evident here. So the character color is still white. All the underline options are here. Cool, solid. Let's call that character style capsule character. And now that I have uh, this character style, I wanna make sure that I'm applying it to this word. Cool, so now I can just take any word or piece of text and start applying this character style. Easy enough. As you can see, there's some unusual things that happen here. Some uh, of the ascenders, like this uh, H, and some of the descenders, like this last little serif and the M, uh, they're, they're overlapping the outside of that capsule, which is not ideal. Now let's go back to an example here of some raw text that you might get from your team. Let's say that your team has decided that the tag cap is going to call out any particular word as having the capsule style applied to it. Now, you've already got your character style set up here for the capsules. Uh, what you need to do is add some grep styles to this paragraph style that uh, will call out for the capsule character style and apply it to any instance of a string of characters that are surrounded by cap and cap here. Uh, fortunately, you can just copy paste what you've already got here under the bold red uh, grep style. And call out capsule character, paste that string here, and replace those T's with cap and cap. So you can see that cap and cap have also had the capsule character style applied to them as have and and or here. Um, so that's that's fine, that's a good start, but just like with the T uh, character style, we wanna make sure that the cap is disappeared as well. Now, the reason why I wouldn't do this, for example, for example, adding uh, this uh, bar, which means or in grep, 
language uh, and uh, saying or cap and applying that invisible tag is the same issue that we noticed before, that we have some awkward spacing with these, uh, this, these underlines in this character style. Uh, so I don't necessarily want to just straight up call caps invisible because that just, ma that just makes uh, a completely empty space and we have some awkward issues here. What I want to do is do something a little bit unusual here. Uh, I'm going to make a new grep style and I'm going to uh, have a new grep style uh, apply a particular character style to cap. For now, all it's saying, uh, it's not applying any character style to that uh, string of characters. So I'm going to make a new character style. And the nice thing about uh, InDesign here is that you can make a new character style straight from grep. So you can choose from a list of uh, styles that you already have created, or you can just go ahead and straight up just make a new character style directly from that uh, previous uh, menu. Let's call this, just call it cap. So I know explicitly that this character style is only going to apply the, to this particular tag. Cool. Um, I am not going to do anything with the fonts or anything like that. I am going to change the size. I'm going to change this to say, for example, let's call this just two point. Uh, and I'm going to make the uh, character color invisible. And that's it. That's all I'm doing. In doing so, now that the character style cap is being applied to the tag cap, uh, it's changed any instance of cap in the text to be uh, effectively the character style being invisible. It still has the, uh, the overlying capsule character grep uh, as a part of it, uh, but it's also, in addition, added the uh, cap character style here. So let's say you wanted to reduce that a bit. Now that the tag is made one point, you can see that the spacing is a little bit different here. That's kind of cool. If you wanted a little bit finer control over that, you can adjust the tracking and start doing some adjustments here. You can see very fine adjustments occurring here. If, for example, you also see that the uh, capsule is slightly misaligned, for example, this feels a little bit off-center here, uh, you can still make adjustments to that character style in the uh, underline options section here. So you can adjust the offset a little bit. Uh, four is a little bit too high. I'm going to split the difference and call that 3.5. Now let's take a look at a real world example from an actual project that I'm working on. You can see that in this unstyled text uh, tags that are just capital letters. So essentially we have just S tags and L tags that are going to represent score and lose. Uh, and these tags are also going to be closed with a slightly different uh, format for our tags with this uh, close slash here, which, which basically emulates HTML tags. I'm setting up these tags this way with these slashes so that anyone else who works on this text or works on this game, if they're familiar with HTML, they'll be more familiar with how to set up these tags and it'll be very clear where the tags are meant to end and where they're meant to begin. The issue with uh, these little slashes is that they're actually active characters in grep. And uh, one of the ways that you have to deal with that is using an escape slash, which is very simple, but I want to save it to the very end of this lesson so that we don't get it confused with anything else. In this paragraph style, you can see that I've got this escape slash right before the close slash in any of the tags that are in this grep style. That just tells grep to not use the actual active character uh, for this slash. Instead, it says, hey, this next character that's coming up, just use it as plain text. Don't actually activate anything with it. And you can see I've done that again here with this closing L tag. In addition, I'm using in some of the cards this uh, vertical bar, which in grep means or. And you can see here that I'm using it as or in this grep style. but. In some cases, I'm using the bar actually in the, in the rules, in the actual rules text. And so for those cases, I want to uh, escape that. So to do that, I made a new character style called bars and applied it to any instance of a bar uh, in the actual text. And it was very simple. All I just did was hit escape slash bar and then grep knows to uh, look for any instance of bars. Uh, that are actual text. I hope you find this example useful. It's a very convenient and easy way to work with your team and get character styles in your text. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and support the rest of this series on Patreon.